Hi, I'm Bob Brokaw with Gwinnett Woodworkers and today I'm going to explain to you how I'm building my latest vacuum veneering pump system. A vacuum veneering pump system looks uh, similar to this, the, the basic pump system. This is a model that is explained at the joewoodworker.com website. Uh, components involved are a, a vacuum pump, some controls, some vacuum reservoirs, and a vacuum bag. And we'll go through and show you how it works here. Okay, the idea behind a pump system like this is to provide a way to apply veneer to a glued substrate and then apply enough uniform pressure to it to ensure good adhesion. I prefer to apply uniform pressure to a project with the absence of pressure caused by vacuum. The process begins by placing the project in a vacuum bag, sealing the bag, and then removing most of the air from the bag. The absence of atmospheric pressure on the inside of this bag results in close to 1,700 pounds per square foot of pressure applied to the inside of the bag. Cycling vacuum pump systems like this contain the basic components, a vacuum pump, a vacuum controller, a MAC valve, a check valve, and over here on this side are vacuum reservoirs and a sub-reservoir. The sizes of the reservoirs and the packaging of these components can take many different forms, but they'll all be interconnected like the schematic shown on the screen. The starter kit shown on the screen is a good value. It contains a lot of parts that you'll find difficult to find at your local hardware supplier. Depending on your particular system's eventual form factor, you'll likely need a few more parts that are available from the bigger hardware suppliers. For the system I'm building today, I chose to design very large vacuum reservoirs in order to quickly remove initial air from the vacuum bag, especially when it's containing irregularly shaped projects and also to support multiple vacuum bags with one pump. Okay, once you're done with a, uh, with a glue up on a substrate, you remove the, the clamp from the bag. And then remove the, the project from the bag. And what you wind up with is a veneered project that is uh, thoroughly bound to a substrate. This particular substrate that I chose to use was MDF. I put this uh, marquetry panel on the front. I put a uh, similar piece of field material on the back so that there's equal tension on both sides of this piece of MDF. Okay, the design process begins 
with placing the fixed size components on a work surface in front of you. These, this would include the vacuum pump, the vacuum controller, the MAC valve, and the check valve. The variable size component in this design is the, the vacuum reservoirs, like this or like this. Those parts are where you can get creative. It can be one piece, you know, as in this one pipe shown here, or it can be several pieces connected together with piping. It could be metal or plastic of any shape as long as it will reliably hold 120 PSI of air pressure. I use air pressure to explain that a container capable of holding 120 PSI of pressure would certainly hold 22 inches of vacuum. Uh, for the design that I'm going to go for, I chose to use three reservoirs of 4-inch PVC because of its availability. And they would fit side by side in a width under 20 inches. Solid core PVC, like this one, is capable of holding 220 PSI of air pressure. Unlike the foam core PVC, which is normally unpressurized, uh, either one comes in 10 foot lengths and is available at your local hardware supplier. I initially chose to divide the 10 foot pipe into three sections for layout purposes. I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to trim it later. My tool of choice to get good cuts on a, uh, on a section of PVC like that is a 12 inch miter saw. The PVC pipes need to be fitted with end caps and have half of the end caps drilled and tapped for quarter NPT pipe. Lastly, I needed to choose how I was going to transport the pump system to its point of use. Since I've had the experience of building a few of these systems now, I know they can get heavy and awkward to move. And since the awkward factor went up significantly with those large reservoirs, I knew hand carrying this one was going to be out of the question. It needed wheels. In most wood shops, the foot, footprint of a tool is a major factor. For this reason, I decided to make this pump system mount to a hand truck. I got this nice one from Northern Tool for around $40. Okay, now I needed to start arranging the components so they would fit the form factor of a hand truck. The, the pump is the, or the heaviest component of the system, so it should go to the bottom. The PVC tanks would logically be side by side and will fit nicely above the pump. Next you move on to the piping process. Uh, the, the systems lend themselves nicely to designing a couple of manifolds constructed from threaded brass pipe. The first manifold attaches to the pump and contains most of the major components that I discussed earlier. There's a lot of ways of arranging these parts as long as they connect together like the schematic. The last bit of piping in this manifold would be a barb fitting that would connect to the vacuum reservoir manifold. The next manifold we'll talk about will connect the vacuum reservoirs together and contain the vacuum switches that control the connection to the vacuum bags. The vacuum gauge also needs to be attached to this manifold. And lastly is a barb fitting for the flexible hose that will connect back to this, this first manifold. The vacuum controller needs to be able to see the pressure present in this second manifold, which is the reason for this barb fitting here. So there'll be a, in the end, there'll be a flexible hose that will attach these two. After a few iterations of piping layouts, I arrived at the following two manifold arrangements. The one you see here for the reservoirs and the one you see here for the pumps. Okay, now that we've got the the two major manifold assemblies together. Uh, what I've done is I've stuck some dummy pipes on the ends of the end caps here 
so that these would represent what the longer, longer uh, vacuum reservoirs would be uh, without having the bulk to deal with. So now what I'm looking for in this design is accessibility to everything and protection for the components. So these, uh, these vacuum switches here that will control the vacuum to the bags, uh, they're easily accessible. Uh, you can get to them to replace parts if need be. Uh, the vacuum gauge is out there where you can uh, easily read it to see what's going on. Uh, any of these parts that are, uh, that are apt to need service are out there and accessible. The filter is accessible and all of it is protected by the oversized piece of wood here that the pump is mounted to. So as you're, uh, as you're wheeling this thing around the shop, if you have a uh, little lapse of memory there and run into something, you aren't going to shear off one of, these, one of these brass fittings. So now that I see the uh, placement of how these parts are going to fit together, I think it's time to start nailing them down. After some consideration about how to mount the, uh, the board that the reservoirs are going to mount to, I wanted to secure that to the hand truck somehow. So uh, after considering the options, I decided on some flathead screws go through the board and through the hand truck and uh, use a stop nut on the back side to keep anything from coming loose. So I was about to finish up the last of the holes here. So armed with that information, I slide the board up here. I've put tape down here on the the leg of the hand truck to determine the uh, optimum distance down the leg of the hand truck. And what I'll do here is uh, clamp this board top and bottom, stand it up and punch holes from the back side and then install the bolts. The next step in the installation of installing the backer board is to drill through from the back side through, right through the four holes that you just put in the hand truck. Next step is to countersink those holes from the front and then install the, the hardware to secure the back. The last step in mounting the plate that's going to secure the, uh, the reservoirs is to finish attaching the plate with the screw the screws that go through the hand truck. So now this should give us a really stable place to attach the reservoirs. We now come to the step of assembling the reservoirs. The uh, one half of the end caps I chose to use the, the ones that were domed where I've uh, drilled and tapped a quarter NPT hole in there. It requires a 7 16 drill bit and a uh, quarter NPT tap that you can get from Joe Woodworker. And uh, what I chose to do, some people will use that uh, purple uh, pipe cleaner just to clean the ends, I chose to clean off the printing and make it look a little more presentable by using acetone. Okay, now then, <clears throat> uh, regardless of what kind of cleaner you use, you still need to use the, the glue. Uh, everything needs to be really, really clean at this point. I'll explain in a moment why. Uh, so what I've chose to do is uh, blew the pipe out and then drug a rag through it, you know, much the way as you would clean a gun. Uh, so now let's get to the point of applying the glue and putting caps on. I 
put glue on the, both surfaces. Copious amounts of it. I've dusted out the inside of the caps also to make sure to remove any debris out of there. You want to make sure once you make contact with the two halves to go ahead and push that thing as far as you could get it because you're only going to be able to do that once. And repeat the process for the end cap that doesn't have a hole in it. Uh, I'm going to put those up on the top side to primarily to shorten the piping run that you see here so that all the all the piping for the pump and the reservoirs is, is down there real close to each other. Okay, so that's how the, the caps are put on the ends of the reservoirs. And that uh, completes the use of the glue, so you may want to cover that up to keep it from stinking up the shop. Um, I made reference earlier to the fact that you want to make sure these pipes are real clean, because what winds up happening is anything that is inside the pipe is going to fall down, going to try to go through this tube, and two places it's going to go. It's going to go up here into the MAC valve. Uh, inside that MAC valve is a spool that uh, shuttles back and forth to control the direction of the airflow. It requires amazingly little debris to foul that spool. And uh, I've not attempted to have, take one of these apart yet, but in similar units that I've I've done it's uh, quite an ordeal to try to get in there and, and clear that spool. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is is any debris that's in here is is headed on its way to the pump and you just hope that the filter is going to pick it up before it gets in there and makes your vacuum pump quit uh, quit functioning. So now that the reservoirs are complete <coughs> I'll attach this last reservoir to the to the fitting here and get ready to attach them with some some fasteners that will attach it to the backing board. Alright, on the last scene you saw how these pipes went together, these uh, air or vacuum reservoirs and uh, so what I did is I completed the assembly of those attached them to the manifold and then uh, fitted some brackets that I made out of uh, laminating a couple of three-quarter inch pieces of plywood and then uh, scrolling out the uh, the area where the pipes go through uh, working on that with a, a spindle sander to make them a nice close fit then I put these uh, spools up here to hold the uh, the vacuum hose that will connect to the bag. So the vacuum hoses will eventually come out of here and wrap around these spools for neatness and possibly also uh, wrap up that way for the for the power cord that we're eventually going to have. Okay, next what we're going to do is work on the electrical aspect of this. We've now got uh, all the plumbing in its pretty near final stages. The only thing I have to do with the plumbing 
is uh, once I get the electrical portion uh, settled out and I'm, I'm through moving stuff around in here, uh, there's a couple of hoses we have to connect. One is the connect the two manifolds together, which involves these two fittings, and also connect the vacuum switch. So this is a connection here that reads the vacuum and the manifold. And I have chosen on this electrical box, which I'm going to mount up here momentarily. On this electrical box, I've chosen to mount the vacuum switch inside the electrical box to have one less external uh, electrical connection. The port for the vacuum switch comes out the bottom, and that'll be the last hose that will connect from here to there. So with that, we'll now move on to making up connections in the electrical box. First thing I'm going to do here is connect up the power, the input power. Well, I can still move this box around. Okay, next we'll pick a nice spot here where the, the box can mount and still be clear of everything that it needs to clear. Okay, what I'm looking for in the placement of this box is that I can still gain access to all the, uh, the various fittings that I need to. One is that barb fitting there. I've got to be able to slide a hose on there loop it around and slide the other end onto this fitting. Gain access to this fitting here, which will then connect to the vacuum switch fitting that's underneath the box. So that looks like a pretty good location there. Next up, place the pump wires into the box. Next up, what we'll do is uh, attach the two ground wires to the to the box. Okay, we've got most of the wires in there now. The only thing that's lacking is the uh, the ones for the Mac valve. Since uh, since the Mac valve has just got uh, wires coming out of the thing, I chose to protect those a little bit. Um, with this automotive wire loom. So what I've, what I've done is cut a piece of wire loom. I put a grommet inside the box so that we can now run the, run the Mac valve wires up into the box. 
And what I'll do is tie these off so that they they won't fall out of the fall out of the box. So that should create enough of a strain relief that uh, the uh, connection at each end will be protected. Okay, so now all I have to do is trim these ends and we'll start, uh, start connecting wires. Okay, when you take a look at the electrical schematic, this line cord switch that I've added, this is just a uh, convenient way of shutting this off and on. You could possibly put a uh, just a regular wall switch inside here, but that would make connections in here a little snug. But uh, if you just imagine that this switch is not here, the uh, connection would just this would be the line cord connection to here. The only uh, switch that is involved in the function of the pump is the uh, vacuum controller which is these two wires which would interrupt the the line side of the power cord on its way to the line side of the pump. Uh, one additional item that's in the box that is not on the schematic is this little pilot light that I put here and I'm just going to put that across the uh, the power cord that's kind of a convenience item to show that there is power applied. Uh, it shows me two things. One is that the, the assembly is actually plugged into power and power is applied there and that the switch is on and the therefore the whole assembly would be would be armed and capable of running as soon as you operate or cycle one of the uh, one of the pneumatic switches. Okay, so next I gotta grab some wires and start connecting them. Okay, what I've just done here is I've connected <coughs> the, the hot lead of the power cord to, the, to one part of the switch and also to one leg of the pilot light. And as I proceed on with the, the other side of the switch, we will now connect in the the pump and the MAC valve.
So that should complete the, the hot side. So we've now got the, the MAC valve and the pump. And the other side of the switch all connected together. The last step is to take all the wires that are left over, which wind up getting connected to neutral. So that would involve the, the cold side of the pilot light, neutral side of the line, the line cord, neutral side of the pump, and the last wire is the other side of the MAC valve. As you can see on the electrical diagram, easy way to envision this thing is that the, the MAC valve remains in parallel with the pump. Okay, to recap what's going on in here is the, the line cord comes in, the hot lead of the line cord goes to the pilot light and also to this vacuum controller. The switch, which is the vacuum controller, uh, comes out and involves the, the MAC valve, which is here and the pump. Then the last uh, set of connections is the neutral from the line cord attaches to the neutral side of the pilot light which attaches to the pump and also the uh, last remaining connection on the MAC valve. So with that um, Electrical connections should be good. So now we'll move on to making up the pneumatic connections. I guess that'll work without further trimming, right? Okay, so now that this uh, pneumatic hose is connected, this is the this is the one that actually does the the work of evacuating the the reservoirs. Now we have to work in the vacuum controller. First off, I want to see if. It makes noise. It does. Okay, on initial test, the uh, the pump turned on and the vacuum controller actuated pretty quickly. So we need to make some adjustment on that. Okay, that shut off at uh, 21 inches. I think I'm going to get it just a little bit higher, maybe to about 23.
Oops. to accomplish the setting that you just saw me making there uh, once the once all of this is covered up what I've what I've done is drilled a hole in the cover and uh, dressed it up after after the drilling operation so that now you can put the cover on there and still be able to access that hole in the event that uh, any fine adjustment needs to be made later Okay, once the uh, once the system is uh, up and and uh, up to pressure and armed and and all that, by watching the gauge there, you can tell the fact that the needle is not moving uh, tells me that there's not any major leaks. If you leave it in this condition for some period of time, maybe a half hour or so, uh, come back and check it again and see if the gauge has moved or if you hear the pump cycle. That'll again tell you whether there's any major leak, but so far this is looking just way better than I had even hoped for. <laughs> okay, so probably the next step to go to, I've got these, uh, these two pneumatic valves shut off, <coughs> which would be the, which would control the hoses for the uh, vacuum bags. Next step will be to add those and uh, run them around the spools. And this thing will be ready to use. I don't think that's going to leak. I think I will put a little bit more soap on it. What I'm putting on there is a little bit of uh, hand soap just to make it easier to make up the connection of this barb fitting. Okay, now we'll uh, do the acid test on this. We'll put the vacuum on a bag and see how this works.
looks like it's successful. Okay, thank you for watching.